Welcome to Sarah Jane Johnson Memorial United Methodist Church on this beautiful Sunday morning. Uh, we'd like to welcome all of our members and those that are with us for the first time or visitors that are coming back to visit us again. We welcome you. Uh, we're so glad to have you worshiping here with us today. I uh, know that we have at least one announcement that I'm aware of um, that we'd like to bring up with Ken. I wanted to mention the prayer line. Should be on. Should be the green light. There was, and I know it was powered up there. Anyway. Ah, okay. You got a hot one for me? Here's a hot <laughs> one. You. Okay. Okay. I want to call your attention to the the bulletin and the fact that we have the upper room intercessory prayer line, which uh, is operated the first and the third Thursday of each month, 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock. Uh, we've already engaged this for, for next year for the same time period. So I would enjoy uh, and just encourage folks uh, to come out and to at least observe uh, what happens. We take calls from all over the country, right in our church office there, uh, for people that are in, in desperate need of prayer, and we pray with them. Uh, then uh, we fill out a slip at the same time. Uh, that slip with the prayer needs gets mailed into Nashville, and it goes to Covenant Prayer Groups, and there are approximately uh, 280 of those prayer groups throughout the United States, and they are prayed for for 30 days. So uh, come out and, and be a part of, of this prayer ministry. It's so very important. And at the same time that we're there, we can pray for the church. We can pray for our country, pray for our leaders, and pray for those that are just hurting all over the world. And again, those, those prayers get sent in. And, and if any of you have prayer requests that you'd like to hand to me, uh, and I will take them on Thursday night and send them via the same route that they will have constant prayers for, for 30 days. So just remember the upper room prayer line and, and please come and participate. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the other thing, I'll just wave the red bag. I'm not after a bull, but uh, put your pocket change in there. It's our mission bag. Uh, we take change, take dollar bills, we'll take checks, whatever. Put it in. It's for our diaper ministry here in the church. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Ken, for heading up that very important ministry that we have here at Sarah Jane. Uh, as you can see by the inserts inside of your bulletin, there are a lot of different announcements going on right now. So please don't just leave those here at the church. Take those home uh, if you haven't read them already, but take them home, put them on the refrigerator so you have them. Uh, a couple of things I wanted to mention here is uh, next, this coming Wednesday actually, the 5th, uh, at 7 o'clock we have our annual charge conference with our district superintendent, Dave Maslin, will be here. Uh, so please, uh, if you can be here, we'd love to have you to be a part of that. All the members are welcome. Uh, the PPR committee will meet at 6.30 prior to the start of the uh, charge conference to meet with the uh, district superintendent to cover some uh, matters that we need to do with him. Uh, the second thing I want to mention is the Eucharistic ministers is mentioned in your bulletin. That we'll be doing uh, communion for the shut-ins during the Advent season, and we can always use help with that. So you can contact the church office um, if you would like to be a part of the Eucharistic ministry. And a couple other dates you'll see in there. It says to keep in mind, of course, the fifth I just mentioned was the charge conference. December 16th will be a combined uh, service. So that will be Sunday after next uh, at 10 a.m. And we will have a, a Christmas cantata going on then as well with the, with the combined services. And then, of course, Christmas Eve, the 24th, we will be uh, 7 o'clock p.m. will be our candlelight service. And like I said, there are a lot of other uh, items in here. I wanted to mention the poinsettias also, because we're doing something a little bit different this year. Um, a lot of times folks don't need to get the poinsettia itself. So if you notice, there's two forms on this one piece of paper. And one is for the poinsettias on the top, if you wish to have a poinsettia to pick up on Christmas Eve after the service. Or on the bottom, if you'd rather, you can just give a Christmas donation to the general fund of the church, 
which is uh, to maintain this beautiful building and all the day-to-day -day maintenance responsibilities and things that we have to do here. So you have one of two ways to do that this year. And the pledge cards also I wanted to mention. This is up on top. If you haven't gotten your pledge cards in yet, it certainly is not too late to do so. Um, it says that we are accepting the 12, 2013 pledge cards through the month of December. If you've lost your card, we can certainly get another one to you, or you can pick one up at the office. You can just put it right into the offering plate during the regular offering time, and we'll make sure that it gets to the church. And every penny counts to run God's house. So we look forward to your pledges. Thank you. We light the first candle, which symbolizes hope. For many years, the faithful looked fo forward to the coming of the Messiah. We look forward with the eyes of faith.
to the coming of our Savior. May we live as he taught, ready to welcome him with burning love and faith. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. I have a joy that uh, we, uh, I have a special guest today from Syracuse, uh, former, my former church, uh, the member of some of them, some of the members visit here and uh, worship together. This is really, really uh, glad and, and honor and, and, and privilege to be with you uh, today, this worship. Could you stand up, please? Um, McKinney family and uh, Carol and Vince, we welcome you. Uh, 
Kevin. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. You can shop. You can shop. Good. First of all, I should have done this during the announcements. A week from this Wednesday, we're going caroling to the shut-ins. And the more people we have, the more shut-ins we can visit, because we want to get done in good shape. One, because the shut-ins go to bed early, and two, we have a party to get going after the caroling. So the more people we can get, and I always say, it is not a prerequisite that you can sing. Don't worry about if you can sing. As long as you can move your lips, that's great. And as long as you like to party, that's great too. So please come and carol with us. We leave it fairly early, uh, quarter to six from the church here, a week from Wednesday night. So hopefully you can make it. Second of all, thanks to everyone that pledged for me for yesterday's polar plunge. It was 37 degrees and I was in the water. In fact, thank you Yvonne for coming. She, she videotaped it and it's out on the web. And the paper said this morning I let out a cry. It wasn't really a cry, it was a shriek when the cold water hit me. But uh, thanks to all of you that pledged. And if anybody wants to do it with me next year, I'm going to have a team. So I know I'm going to get some people here that want to do it next year. It's just a momentary freezing, and then it's fine. And uh, I would like to recognize our uh, newcomer or guest. Uh, could you just stand up and, yes, please. Your name? We welcome you and thank you be with us. Thanks. Let us pray. Father God, we have come before you again today. We have come as we rely on the cross of Jesus Christ. Please wash us with your precious blood. Our pains and scars, the darkness from our sins, please wash us clean from these things. So let us boldly go before the throne of heaven through this worship service. Help us go before the light of God's glory. Let all the worshipers here today meet God and hear God's voice. Let us all experience the joy, peace, and love and hope that only God can give us. Lord, there are many who are sick today. Touch each and every one of them with your powerful hands. Set them free from their illness. Give them health so that they can all worship you. And we pray for all the shot team members also, wherever they are. Please give them your grace. Lord, precious visitors from Syracuse are worshiping with us today. Please bless them and allow our fellowship to continue in you, Christ Jesus. Today is the first Advent Sunday. It is the season of waiting and ex expecting for our Messiah and help us to discover the Lord and serve him as our master. Let our bodies and minds be healed, recovered and recreated. Let worship be recovered in us. Let prayer life and evangelism be recovered in our church life as well. We continue with the prayer you taught us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now comes the time we'll accept your gifts and offerings.
opportunity for our choir to join the congregation, you can turn in your hymnals to page 947 for our scripture reading this morning. We will be reading from the first book of the Acts of the Apostles. And we will be reading verses 1 through 11. And we will be doing this responsively. On page 947, we begin with, In the first book, O Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach. Until the day when he was taken up, after he had given commandment to the Holy Spirit, to the apostles whom he had chosen. To them he presented himself alive after his passion by many proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking of the kingdom of God. And For John baptized with water, but before many days you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So he said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has fixed by his own authority. But you shall And when he had said this, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heaven as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes, and together, and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning, everybody. I want you to uh, repeat after me. Jesus is the Christ. Again, one more time. Jesus is the Christ. Jesus is the Christ. And now you can greet each other in next, you know, the person who will sit next. Please. Jesus is the Christ. Thank you. Thank you. It's good to see you. Jesus is the Christ. Thank you. This morning, uh, we read the book of Acts. In order to understand the book of Acts, we must know its background well. Back then, Pharisees went around and persecuted people who believed in Jesus. Christians were captured whenever they talk about Jesus Christ because the Pharisees believed it was heretical. So if they were arrested, they sometimes were imprisoned or even executed. Back then, in the Jewish society, people were not able to freely worship like we do today because Judaism was the official religion. That is why when people were caught believing in Jesus, they were even executed. And Saul was um, one of those Pharisees who went around arresting the believers. Saul even gave out murderous threats to the believers. And this is the underlying background of the book of Acts. Whenever Christians went, persecutions and interventions were always present. But even under these circumstances, the Jesus movement 
was spreading in many places. In Acts chapter 2, after the Pentecostal experience at Mark's upper room, people started to witness the gospel of Jesus Christ and his resurrection. In Acts 6-7, it says that the gospel was spread throughout the whole region of Jerusalem. It says, so the word of God spread. The number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly. And a large number of priests became obedient to the faith. Each day, three to five thousand people came back to the Lord. In Acts 7, Stephen was murdered as he was preaching the gospel. In chapter 8, when Philip proclaimed the gospel in the city of Samaria, great works of God took place. In chapter 9, it shows Saul's repentance and his, his return to Christ. The Jesus movement, the movement of Jesus, has spread throughout the whole region of Jerusalem. Each and every day, they taught and witnessed the gospel of Christ. Act 5.42 says, Day after day, in the temple court and from house to house, they never stopped the teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Christ. In Acts 16, when Paul and Silas were praising God in the prison, a miracle occurred and the prison doors opened. The jailers took out his sword to commit suicide. Then Paul proclaimed the historic message. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you and your household will be saved. Even in prison, the word of God was being spread. Great miracles were happening. In Acts 17, people accused Paul and other evangelists, saying, these, pe these men who have caused trouble all over the world have now come here. These men who, who is a trouble, uh, cause of troubles, now here. And what happened in Acts 19, there was a huge riot. When people proclaimed the gospel, people who served the goddess Artemis arose and revolt. But even among those riots, Christians survived. Even among huge persecutions, the churches survived. Not only survived, but greatly revived. How could this happen? Today, through Acts 1, we need to understand a few things and grasp firmly onto them. First, they knew, this is very important. I think this, today's message is very important. I need your attention. They knew that Jesus is the Christ. Verse 1 of today's scripture say, In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach. And what is the former book? It is the Gospel of Luke. So the book of Luke and the book of Acts were written by the same author, Dr. Luke. And who was the book of Luke written about? Verse 1. He says again, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach. The main theme of the book of Luke is Jesus Christ. Not only Luke, but the other books of the gospel have the same theme about Jesus is the Christ. Yes, who is Jesus? Jesus is the Christ, Messiah. The early church knew this very well. That is why they were able to overcome even among harsh persecutions, so many barriers, so many difficulties and threatenings. Jesus is the Christ. Yes, we must know this. And we must experience this as well every Sunday morning. And not only every Sunday morning, but also every 
every moment in your daily lives, Jesus is the Lord. Only then we can overcome world and sinful darkness and we can win. When we know and experience Jesus Christ, then church can shine the light on the entire dark world. The church can save the world. And this is the reason why church exists on this earth. Who is Jesus? He is the Messiah. Prophesied in the Old Testament for a long time. He came as the Christ. Proclaiming this truth is the four gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And this is the main theme and focus of the Bible. If we do not know this, even if we read the Bible, it will be useless. If we do not know this, we would not be able to have a proper Christian faith life. In New York City, there was a, a rich man who lived in the multi-million dollar mansion. He had money, property, he had a degree, he had a beautiful wife and family, but he had everything. But his heart was always empty. So he wandered from church to church. One Sunday he go to this church to find the answer. The other Sunday he go to that church to find the answer. But he wandered for 10 years but still did not find the answer. So he lived as a Sunday Christian, nominal Christian. He came to church once in a while and lived as a non-believer. One day, a pastor visited this man and he preached the simple truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ to this man. At that place and at that moment, this man kneeled down and accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. He accepted Jesus as his own personal Savior and Lord. And his life was changed completely to a life of a sincere, sincere believer. And this man, all this man did for 10 years was going back and forth to church. And he never, never listened the simple message of the gospel of Jesus Christ and his resurrection. He did not know who Jesus Christ really is. But one day, he was greatly impacted from the message of Christ. And afterward, his life was never the same. You know, Saul also know. He knew about Jesus. He probably heard about Jesus through rumors. He didn't know about the stories of Jesus from other people. But he still persecuted Christians. One day, as he was heading toward Damascus, he met risen Lord Jesus Christ. He received a great, great shock and great impact. Since then, great works took place inside of Saul. Oh, this person is the one who prophesied in the Old Testament. This is the one who was explained through the blood of millions of millions of lambs on the altar. And this is the one who was explained by the anointed priest, king, and prophet. Truly, this person is a Christ and Messiah, savior of humankind. An absolute answer to his life had been given to him. The solution to all of his life, life problems was found. That's why Saul became Paul. Why did great works take place in the early church? Why the early church revived tremendous it's, it's explosion of evangelism and, and, and revival? It is because the early church knew Christ. They knew Christ. It is because they discover the Christ and they receive great impact from the message of the risen Lord. 
Why aren't there great works taking place in today's modern church? It means that they haven't discovered Christ yet. It means that Christ is faint in them. One person asked, asked me, Pastor, why do you always speak about Christ? Why do you talk about the same message of Christ every Sunday? And this person asked me, because he hadn't discovered Christ yet. He says, I am Christian, but he do not know Christ yet. When you discover Christ, there's nothing you can do but to speak about Christ. Because Christ is the answer to my life, and Christ is the solution to my problems, my life problems. So there is no way I cannot talk about the answer. I do not, I'm, I do not want to teach the doctrines or theology. I want to talk to you, the risen Lord. I'm a pastor. I have love for your souls deeply as a pastor. Because I love you, I want to give you the most precious and valuable thing. I hope you discover Jesus Christ. I hope my, our church receive a great impact from the message of Christ, the risen Lord. Aha, Jesus is the Christ. He's the Son of God. He's the solver of all my life problems. I have, now I have to spread the gospel. The reason and goal of my life is Jesus Christ. I bless you to have these kind of realizations. The early church definitely saw Jesus. So there was no choice but for God's words to take plain. So what was there to fear? There was nothing to fear. There was nothing to worry about. What did Apostle Paul say? We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. Why? Why is this? But we have this treasure in jars of clay. Yes, we are like a jars of clay. We are fragile and easy to break. But because Christ is in us, we are strong. We are solid. We have reason to exist, to proclaim to the world. The Pharisees put together their strength to hard press the Christians. But the Christians arose and arose. Roman soldiers and emperors oppressed the Christians for 250 years. But the Christians still arose. Hebrews 11 says, They were stoned, sold in two, put to death by the sword. But they still could not win over the Christians. Why? Because the Christians clearly saw the Christ. How was Stephen still victorious, even as he was stoned to death? In Acts 7, it says that his face become like an angel. How is this, impos how is this possible? While they throwing the stones to his face and body, how come his face turned into like an angel? Acts 7.55 says, But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked upon to heaven and saw the glory of God and saw the Jesus standing at the right hand of God. So he was able to win over even death. My loving friends, this is the first Sunday of the Advent. Advent means expecting, waiting. Waiting for what? Whom? Waiting for Messiah, our Lord Jesus Christ. 
I sincerely ask you to open your heart this season, accept him deeply in your heart, and serve him daily life as your Lord and Savior. Confess him, worship him. We need to recover worship. We need to recover the prayer. We need to recover evangelism. We need to recover our Lord Jesus Christ in our life, in church life. Where is Jesus? He is the owner and master of our church and our life and our human kinds. I hope you recover your worship life. Hope you recover your prayer life. Recover your passion and love for Christ. If Christ is faint, then our faith becomes faint and weak. Our spiritual power slowly disappear because we are faint about Christ. My Lord, our, our owner of our life. But if Christ is definite and clear, then our faith are definite and our lives are full of strength and we get to earn spiritual power every day. Recently, I went on visitation for our chat team members. When I met them, we talked, we sang hymns, we read the word of God, and we prayed together. And I have just one wish, just one wish in my heart, that Jesus Christ will become definite in their heart. That, my, that they may be able to fix their eyes upon Jesus Christ each and every day. With that heart, I have my wish and prayers as I go on these visitations. When I look at you, I have the same kind of heart. I wish that Christ is definite and clear in your heart. I deeply wish for your heart to be filled with a passion toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Pastor, what does Christ mean? Pastor, then what is Christ? Why we have to submit ourselves to the Lord? When man was wandering and lost from God, Christ as a true prophet opened the way to meet Father God. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one come to the Father except through me. When man was dying and fallen into sin and curse and condemnations are flowing over to the sinners, Christ as the great priest solved those sin problems. Therefore, there is now no condemnation those who are in Christ Jesus. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death. When Satan secretly strike us down, he secretly attack to our children without us even knowing. Christ as the King frees us from this. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. Prophet King, priest. These three titles combined is Christ. Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. He is the server of all our life problems. He is the answer. He is the way. He is the source of our life. This is definitely true without a doubt. That's why so many early Christians died. They give their life for this message, for this reason, Christ Lord. This is the reason why we are waiting and expecting Jesus Christ on this Advent season. That's why we are celebrating Christmas Day. It's not just a gift day, it's just not a mood, you know, for something beautiful, sanctuary, just a mood, Christmas mood. No. From the bottom of my life, my, my heart, 
I bless you again and again and again. I bless you to know and enjoy and witness that Jesus is the Christ. Let us pray. Yes, you are the Christ, Son of the living God. Lord, help us to know and enjoy and share and witness that you are Christ in this Advent season. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please open your hymnals to page 13 for the sacrament of communion, the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread and gave thanks to you, and broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, and gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Now I would like to invite you, all the people of God, to the banquet of heaven. We will have uh, two stations. So please, uh, those who serve the plate and the cups, come forward. Thank you. Bob, could you help them? We need one more person. Thank you. Yes. Now join the banquet and take a cup and bread, please.
주님을 모시게 하시며 참된 예배가 아들의 삶 속에 회복되어 줄수 있도록 주의 성령께서 역사하시고 나라가 임하여 주시옵소서 아버지요 주는 그리스도셔 되십니다 교회의 머리가 되신 주 우리가 그리스도 운동하게 하시고 말씀 운동하게 하시고 전도 운동하게 하시고 기도의 영이 회복되게 하시옵소서 성령의 역사하심과 충만하심 우리의 교회의 라이프 속에 충만하게 도와주시고 참된 빌리버 그리스도의 사람들을 일어서게 하여 주옵소서 일꾼들이 세워지게 하시고 갈급한 심령들을 문을 열어주시고 충성되고 참된 일꾼들이 여기저기서 세워져 나갈 수 있도록 주님이 역사해 주옵소서 우리 주 예수 그리스도께서 심령들을 만져 주시옵소서 아버지 하나님의 은혜 완전히 저들에게 임하게 도와 주시옵소서 주 예수는 그리스도십니다 오늘 여신 주님을 찬양합니다 우리 아버지 역사여 주시옵소서 아버지 여 주옵소서 아버지여 성령이 만들어 놓으면 주옵소서 아버지 하나님 하늘의 문을 열어주시옵소서 Peace I live with you My peace I give you I do not give to you as the world give Do not let your heart be troubled Do not be afraid 할렐루야 주 예수여 도우시옵소서 평안 전지 Do not be anxious about anything But in everything By prayer and petition with thanksgiving Present your request to God And peace of God which transcends all understanding Will guard your heart and your mind be rejoice always pray without ceasing give thanks in all circumstances for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus Let us all stand up and we will sing our closing hymn number 454 Open my eyes that I may see of t 
truth thou the end is clear and while the wave notes for all my ear everything falls will disappear silently now I wait for thee ready my God thy will to see Open my ears, illumine me, Spirit divine. Open my mouth and let me bear clearly the warm truth everywhere. Open my heart and let me prepare Love with thy children thus to share Silently now I wait for thee Ready, my God, thy will to see Open my ears, loom in me Stay The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of God, communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Those who enjoy and know and proclaim that Jesus is the Christ, now and forever. Amen.